Welcome into Smooth Operators with your hosts, Noah, Griggs, and Ben, going through the world of Formula One. If you want to interact with the show today, you can tweet at us at Noah underscore Phillips, at Junior underscore McClurkin, and at the Griggs B. It's time for the green flag, and it's lights out, and away we go. And welcome, everybody, to a shortened episode of the Smooth Operators podcast. We have breaking news here for you. But before we get into that, I'm Ben McClurkin. Alongside me is Griggs Blankenberg and Noah Phillips. Um, but guys, we got big news. Um, uh, AlphaTauri has recently made an announcement stating that they will be dropping Nick DeVries before the next race, and Daniel Ricciardo will replace him in Hungary. So huge news. Um, I'd like to say that this one was all me. I had that one in the books from the beginning. Not the beginning. You can't say that. I guess you could say like a couple weeks ago. You can't say the beginning because you didn't was, say on our preseason. I was saying you didn't it say since on our preseason Australia. episode. You did not say it on our preseason episode. I was saying it since episode. Australia. I was saying it yeah, since Australia. I don't know. We got to check the tape on that one. But yeah, I we'll, mean, we'll check the tape and get back to you. Also, I ben, woke you up. Can't act like this is breaking news. We're recording this at seven thirty at night. This happened this morning. You can't act like. This is breaking. We're breaking new ground. We have went. Well, to the it, it could Alphatari be. Offices. It could be news. It could we, be news to people. It could be news to some people. So I was going to say that we are breaking the news, which is but, true to some yeah. people, technically speaking. But yeah, I woke up this morning. I saw on Twitter that there was a possibility of this happening. Nothing official yet. Then Ben calls me when I'm like half asleep, still kind of. He calls me. We need to have an emergency episode and I'm go. Why? He goes, because Nick DeFries has been switched for Daniel Ricciardo at Avatari. Which then Ben brought up a good point this morning, how Avatari has always been seen as like kind of a junior team. This Daniel Ricciardo move now cements its status of they're switching away from being the the rookie team for Red Bull now. My question, we can get into this more in the show later, is this kind of a test run? See, okay, let's see what Checo does the rest of the year, and let's see what Daniel does, compare them together, and then potentially swap them. Because right now, I don't know what the future of Nick DeVries is going to hold. But it's very interesting to see that. Because, again, they say they're not going to touch Checo. But you never know with Red Bull. They, they're they one yeah. of the most... They're the quickest team, I'd probably say, to make changes like this. If Nick DeVries was any other team this year, they probably don't make this decision until at least after the season's over. Yeah, but that's the thing with Red Bull and the talent pool that they've acquired. Is they can easily make that decision and it not really hurt them that badly. Um, to your question about Nick DeVries, like what happens with his career, I mean, he's got he's still got plenty of options. He's won in every other series that he's been in except F1. He might just be cut out for other kinds of work. Um, and also, yeah, I think, I think they'll definitely be looking at Perez's pace versus Daniel Ricciardo's pace because according to Lawrence Barreto, a reporter for F1.com, um, Daniel Ricciardo was posting laps that would have put him on the front row of the grid at Silverstone in the Pirelli tire test. So in his very first drive in a Formula One car this season, he would have qualified second. So you know what that means. Mm -hmm. It means he's fast. Uh, it, he quick it means he's it. quick. And, and it also means that Perez is a guy whose abilities need to be considered for the good of the team in the long run so we'll see how that ends up for him yeah i mean this is a big deal go ahead no i was about to say ben you brought up the fact they or maybe it was greg's can't really remember that they could be getting ready for a swap of daniel ricardo and sergio uh up at red bull and I personally, do, how long does Checo have left on his contract? Is this his final he, year? Yes, this year and next year. This year and next but year. That, but, that year. Can, but that can be ended early, I believe. That can be ended early. So mm -hmm. it's like a player option or a team option. Kind of, but yeah, but they just can say like, here, we'll just pay you the rest of the contract so you don't have to do any work. So would He Checo, has a buyout. Would Checo then have the, I don't even know the correct – word for it, the chest to accept the demotion down to AlphaTauri if that happens in the off season. I think he might as well just retire because he's one of the older drivers in F1. People forget that. But, I mean, 
if he doesn't want to waste race for Alpatari, I mean, K-Max contract stuff. There's not a lot of places that are going to have a lot of open seats this year. I mean, Lewis Hamilton's still technically in contract negotiations, but he's going to retire at Mercedes. Um, both Ferraris are locked down. That's an opinion. That is not decided yet. But, but I don't. But literally, he would have to go to a different team. Both Ferraris are locked down, and I don't see him going to Red Bull. And I could definitely don't see him going back to McLaren or going to any other team. Yeah, but you you see him going to Mercedes. I mean, that's the only place. Like, that's the only spot because he's not taking a demotion with who he is. So, well, I'd see the Mercedes, I mean... or he'll he can walk away and be okay. He's going to have to walk away because Lewis is going to sign that contract deal in a few months. So I don't really, I don't really even mind, mind the thought of that though. I think that would be very intriguing to see Nick and George. I don't think that would be where they go though. Oh, I don't see. Oh no. Nick DeFries is not going to Mercedes. Absolutely not. That's not what I was saying. We were talking about like where Sergio could go. Not Nick. Oh, not, yes. Okay, my mistake. I was but saying still, the only regard- big. I was saying the only big six spot that's open next year, besides if Sergio is booted from Red Bull, would be the Lewis Hampton spot as of this moment of recording, July yeah, 11th. Which is, it's it's a huge question mark at this moment of recording, even for Perez, and I don't think Lewis is going to retire, so I don't really see that being a possibility. Um, however, would it be interesting? Yeah, I think so. Um, Perez and Russell sometimes don't play particularly nice with teammates. They're both decent enough people and very good drivers, but I think they both have the potential to clash with teammates and say my my orders over team orders. So that said, I think that could be a spicy uh, weekend if Perez has the pace, but if he's not found to have the pace, then I mean, he's out of luck. If Daniel Ricciardo outperforms and scores more points than Sergio Perez this next weekend. What is the next step? Because that might be the do-all be-all for Sergio Perez at Red Bull Racing. Yeah. Um, I give him to Monza. Hmm. If Perez finishes on average lower on merit to Ricciardo, I'd swap him. Noah? Monza is in four races, isn't it, Ben? Yes. That's a yes. quick turnaround time. for. Wait, there's also the summer break in between there. No, that yeah. is correct. Yeah. There's the summer more. break. I was about to say, if you do that, though, that's only for seven more races. I think it'd be better just to let it happen in the off season. Um, if you do do that swap, I don't think it's smart to do it in the season because Red Bull has a lot of things going for them right now. They have a huge lead for P1 and the constructors. And I just and people were, we're acting like all this stuff about Sergio Perez, but he's still second in the driver's standings. Barely. It's teetering. That's still second he, he, in the driver's standings, but still. He, I know hasn't ma- he hasn't made it out of Q2 in six races in a row. He's in second because he won – in Jetta, and no one else is one other than him. And Max. And, and Max. Max, Sapp, and Max, of course. Who is, one, who is one everything. Sorry for that delay. Uh, just was pondering just how much of a gap Max has on everybody else. Max would be leading the championship by himself, so Sergio has made no significant contribution to the team's performance other than that that was given by the car and circumstance. Perez was just out of it. It's it's over. Um Mm-hmm. But that said, um, you know, thinking about the possibility of a Ricardo Perez swap, it, it may take more than Monza, but those four tracks are all traditional European circuits, and that's where he's weak. And if he can improve where he's typically weak under pressure, I would say that would make for a good sign for his career. But if he can't, I, I wouldn't blame Red Bull to drop him at all. And who's the last driver not named Max Verstappen to win at Monza? You got it. Oh, uh, it was uh. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. I know this one. It was Sergio Perez, wasn't it? No. No. 
It was uh Y'all want me to say it was Daniel Ricardo, but it wasn't. Daniel Ricardo won in 2021. It, yeah, that was. Max won in 2022. I'm saying last driver, oh. not named Max. Oh, I thought yeah, I thought you said the last driver. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I miss I missed the part about Max. Yes. That was the last one when Max and Lewis took each other out in dramatic fashion. That was A McLaren won two. But we have to we have to see both sides here. That's also because they told Lando to back off him. And he obeyed. So I don't I don't know. I don't know. If Lando is faster than Daniel in that scenario, it's just geez, it's it's so hard to call, but I mean I think on average merit Daniel is a better driver given that he's a multiple race winner. But he's also been in race winning machinery. So it goes back to that age old debate of if you put a guy in a midfield car that's really good in a front running car, will he win a championship every time? And as of yet, we don't know. Yes. No, yeah. We have to believe. Yeah. Yeah. But we also put Charles Leclerc in a championship winning car and the team around him imploded. <laughs> Noah can't escape. That, that was the team's fault, but I'm going to Yeah, throw, the team around him imploded. That, that was the team's fault, not the driver's fault. But I would like to throw my opinions of where Nick DeFries can go now that he is out of Formula 1. There's always the, the uh, modified series that runs here in the United States. There He's is not going Indi- to modified. There is IndyCar. <laughs> that might be a little too fast for him. There is stock car racing here in the United States. Hendrick Motorsports. There is legend races around this great country that can do that. Um, He can't participate in that. The Endurance Series. Hang on. There is a race actually happening in Alabama uh, this coming up weekend at East Alabama Motor Speedway where the winner of the feature race gets $7,553 to if they win the feature, I think Nick DeVries should come down here to East Alabama and win that and get that $7,000. Mm. I think he'll lose more money traveling here than he will if he wins. <laughs> yeah, but he get his name back on the map in a series that I know he can do well in, and the mm. sponsors will eat him up. Thank you, Alex Houston, for giving me this idea, by the way. Oh, man. Alex knows East Alabama Motor Speedway better than I do, although I live relatively close to there. Um, just, just don't ever. Dude, you got to drop really through. You interact follow. with it. Got to drop through. You oh yeah, you feller, do. feller, feller, you feller. Usually I'm, usually I'm riding around in uh, Shorterville and I see the signs and I'm like, interesting. I should go check that out, and I never do. But anyways, I think I think most likely he's probably going to GT3. Um, or maybe LMP2 or LMP1, depending on if there's an opening and how that works out financially for him. Um, you could also see him doing IndyCar. I think that's a possibility. A return to Formula E, also a possibility. I mean, he's got he's got his options open in Europe and in the states. I, I mean, I, I don't really, I don't really know how it's going to go though with his reputation right now. That's the hard part. I think any GT car would be. Glad to have an XF1 driver. Any LMP would also probably be happy to have him. Probably. Especially if it's over here with IMSA. Mm. Yeah, but like anything that. else, gentlemen? No, I think that about wraps it up. That about wraps it up. That's going to do for this short emergency broadcast episode of Smooth Operators. If you missed any of today's short show or any of last week's show, go ahead and check it out on your favorite podcast platform, wherever you get your podcast. If you do feel so inclined, also check us out on Twitter at SMOP Podcast. But until this su- next Sunday, where we will have our Hungarian Grand Prix preview for Greg Blankenberg, Ben McClurk, and No Phelps. I already said I'm Greg Blankenberg, but I'm Greg Blankenberg. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Smooth Operators on Wheel 91.1 FM. Have a great rest of your week. I already said that once this week. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you back here on Sunday and War Eagle.